Hello everyone, this is Jagai Rajat from Rail Studios. So in today's video, we are going to learn about how can we easily create a simple Redux based application. In my previous video, we have already learned about what can be done using Redux and how can you structure this sort of application using React and Redux. So in today's video, we are going to learn how we can actually create and code this application. So it is a simple voting machine. So one can press this vote button to increment the votes. And if one presses this voting disabled, this button gets disabled. So it's a simple machine. So let's start building this sort of application. But keep one thing in mind that this particular tutorial will not take libraries like React Redux into account. The reason being I only want to concentrate on the working of Redux. So there are certain helper functions which libraries like React Redux provides you which can actually help you in setting up Redux properly for the React based application. But the intent of not using such a library in this particular video is that we are going to stick to the fundamentals of Redux so as to give you full insights about how Redux is supposed to work and what is happening under the hood. If you have mastered Redux, you can easily use libraries like React Redux in order to uh, easily incorporate Redux in your large applications. We are only going to stick to Redux. Okay. Apart from that, I'm going to only show you how we are going to code this display button. I mean this display and this vote button. I will leave the coding of this voting disabled select button uh, for you as an exercise to do. If you feel that you are stuck somewhere, maybe you want to check out the full code sample tutorial that is listed in the video description. So in case you are stuck, maybe you want to check the video description out. So let's start. Let me close this, open a new code pen. Again, I'm not going to uh, show you using a text based editor because I don't really want to waste uh, our precious time in setting up the editor and uh, creating a new react project or something like that. We are going to start with a online solution. So we are going to create a new pen and we are going to quickly set up react. So this will be, oops, I doubt that we did id okay so our application is hosted inside this let me set up react properly okay save and close okay react dom dot render and then we can render anything let it be p hello and then I hope if you have been following my videos, you might have mastered this because this is the very basic thing one has to do in order to make React work. And it is not working. Network change was detected. I don't know. Let me reload this page. Okay. React application is working. So let me collapse the CSS bar and HTML bar as well. So our first step is to import redux into our application to do that we are going to go to cd and js and then we are going to look for redux so cd and js is a website which hosts several javascript libraries and you can easily import those libraries in your web projects so here is the redux library and this is the url for the library where it is hosted just copy it and in the settings go to javascript tab and add another resource and paste this now let's test so import this create store from redux 
as we have talked about store is the thing which stores the state of your application so first of all i am going to create a store so that will be store create store and then we have to pass a function now as of now i have provided a dummy function it is not going to do anything but this is the reducer function so we have to write a reducer function before that let's try to write the display element the normal stuff let's not write constructor as of now just try to render the component okay and then i'm going to just the count this state count so we are going to manage an internal state for the display component and this state count will be getting its value from the store okay so let's make the essential plumbing so this dot state will be count zero and we have to call props and then again props should go here as well so, okay so this is our display function okay let's write a new application function i mean application component so that will be again and we are not going to do much in this app component except putting all of our controls under one roof okay so as of now we have made a display component and an app component now this is the parent component we have talked about as of now it is not doing much and it is not going to do much in a redux based application but had it been a react application i mean a vanilla react application i would have put every single event handler and state data inside this app component okay but this is not the case in redux application let's write our reducer function so it is a simple function so let it be reducer okay okay it takes your state and action as we have already learned in my previous video now you can use default value for this state argument and we are going to set this as initial state now for initial state let's create yet another object now this is will be the initial state of your application so if you like to set up some defaults for your application or uh, some data your application can start with you can set that data as initial state so in our voting machine we can set the number of votes and whether the voting is enabled or not as our initial state okay so our initial state is something like this can vote that is true and number of votes is zero okay now we have learned that it is the responsibility of reducer function to decide which kind of transformation it has to apply over the state right so we have to write a switch statement and then we are going to take the type property of action into account okay now let's suppose a user has voted so that 
type property can be action vote okay and this can be a simple string and we are going to write our logic here and break this and there should be a default case in case the dispatch action does not match any of the cases specified inside the switch statement so in that case we are going to return the state we have got as an input okay so we are going to return the state now this action vote is simply a string so we can define it like constant action vote and then it can be action vote it is not a difficult concept this is just a string okay so we are making our decisions based on a string okay action type contains a string okay so if the reducer function gets an action and it is of type action vote we are going to return a new state as we have talked and learned that every single time reducer uh, catches an action it is going to transform the data of the state and then it outputs a new object okay so we are going to use object dot assign so this way we can create a new object and this object will contain all of the new properties or state of your application and then the object returned by this particular statement is going to be stored as the new state of your application okay so we are going to create a new object and then in that we are going to put all of the older state data and then we are going to put or transform some of the existing data so we can increment the vote here vote okay equals to state dot votes plus one okay so here this final object will contain can vote equals to true and the votes will be the initial votes which is contained inside state dot vote plus one so this action will actually increment the number of votes by one okay and then we are just returning our new object maybe you want to read more about object dot assign it's a new facility available in es6 or ecma step 2015 okay so this is how we create a new object and return it and then redux library updates as a store with this new object so this is our sample reducer function now we have to provide this reducer function inside create a store so we have replaced our dummy reducer functions with an actual working reducer function okay all right so save that and maybe we want to put things in chronological order so let's create an store here okay now we have got a reducer function which is able to transform our state data we have already created a store as well we have a display component ready and we have this app component ready as well which houses the display component okay so let's replace this app component i mean this dummy component with our app component okay okay so we have got zero here so this is due to this state as of now display is unaware of our redux store now we need to put some plumbing in place in order to make this display aware of our redux store data to do that we are going to do something like store dot subscribe because we know that we have to subscribe to the changes that are happening in our redux store okay and then we are going to pass in a event handler so that can be the set state 
and then count equals to store dot get state so that is how you are going to get the state from the store and then the number of votes okay so now we have put essential plumbing in place and our display component will get the data from the store okay so to check that put minus one here and we are getting minus one here as soon as the data changes in a state the changes will be reflected here but how can we actually change the data inside the store or how can we actually uh, increment the vote count for that we have to create yet another react component and you might have guessed it correctly that that component will be the vote button component so let me quickly write that component so we can copy paste most of this stuff so let me create a new component by copy pasting okay and let it be vote button and the vote button won't be having any state okay and it won't be having any uh, subscription as well as of now but when you will code the vote selector button then you will have to write the subscription method in order to make the plumbing for vote button to interact with vote select right so as of now i don't really need it so i'm removing it but keep in mind that to make the complete application work with the drop down select button you will have to use this kind of subscription uh, callback okay but as of now i don't really need it so i'm going to remove it and let me just replace this with a button okay and it will be a vote button and on click event will just take this arrow function and I am going to dispatch an action that is how you dispatch actions and this oops, type equals to action vote and I can send some arbitrary data but our reducer function is not using arbitrary data in action vote so there is no point in sending arbitrary data so this is it okay so that is how you can actually dispatch actions and uh, send signals to redux library that something has happened and it should uh, apply the transformations as per the reducer function so as soon as a user clicks this particular button action vote action will be dispatched by this vote button component okay and you can also put this thing inside a new function and make that function a class member of this vote button class but uh, this example is very easy so i haven't done that but if you want more readability maybe you want to do that sort of thing okay in that case you have to make sure that you are binding that event handle property inside the class properly okay so let me put that button inside the application as well vote button okay. turns out i haven't ended this button properly and it is not yet rendering properly because i haven't hosted the components properly inside my application and now it is working so we have got this vote button in place and if you can see that everything has started working properly okay so i press this button and this count is getting incremented and as soon as this count 
increments inside the redox store this particular callback gets called and that is how our display uh, component is getting the updated data from redox store so this part of our application is working fine now we have to write vote select component for that we can use select html element and i am leaving that thing as an example for you guys to complete in case you are stuck as i have already instructed you may want to check out complete code sample link in the video description we have finally reached to the conclusion of our little two parts redux series and i think that now you know how you can actually make redux work in your applications also i would like to tell you that you may want to have a look at react redux library it provides you with several handy functions which you can use in order to work with redux inside your react application okay also there is a new context api in react 16.3 which has been launched recently so for your small scale application you might not have to use redux in your application you can readily use react 16.3 context api to do all of this sort of programming and manage all of your apps data in one place so make sure to follow rain studios youtube channel in case you are interested in learning more about programming and how to make stuff and things like full stack development and mobile development and javascript also give this video a thumbs up in case you found this particular video useful this is Ogara Jasaksena signing off for now and I'll see you around next time. Bye.